this is Yuho Making Stuff, and welcome to the third part of Bandai Star Wars TIE Advanced X1 build. In this part we concentrate on the weathering effects. Let's see how it goes. Okay, before we start the weathering, we need to paint the wings of the black parts of it. Uh, I mixed uh, black and uh, medium grey to get a really really dark grey, almost black but not entirely. So I'm just giving a couple of coats of that dark color to the wings. Um, those were, by the way, pretty boring to mask out, but luckily they were like a square shape, so it was easy, but well, it took some time. And then we jumped to the weathering. I'm using my all painting uh, all colors. Uh, I'm doing a mix of uh, uh, blue and uh, like brown, and uh, to get this kind of not uh, rusty, but uh, well, it's almost rusty effect. Um, but I don't want this to be too rusty. Uh, just to give some uh, discoloration. Uh, along the along the parts. Uh, this, uh, by the way, is a technique uh, uh, really well explained by a uh, guy called Fitchton Fu, F I C H T E N F O O. Uh, he does this kind of weathering to Millennium, Millennium Falcon model. And he explains it really well, and uh, his technique is pretty awesome. But basically, it's like um, I'm doing this just over the Tamiya paints. Uh, I'm laying a coat of uh, turpentine or turpenoid just to give the oils some lubrication, and then I'm just randomly well, not entirely randomly, but semi-randomly dabbing uh, the colors al along the way and uh, blending them with uh, with a clean brush. And here we are with the body, uh, same thing, lubricate and uh, do some dabs. Um, they are a bit um, planned pl places and uh, like uh, from seam lines and those uh, greeblies and stuff like that, uh, places where the um, rust or other junk would stick. And um, I'm brushing it along the like uh, moving direction, so the, the it this is like uh, uh, it gives the same results as the uh, streaking effects that we will do later, but this is far more subtle, just to give uh, like a like a discoloration here and there. Again, pretty subtle effect, uh, but uh, I'm blending them quite quite in, so that they're they're not that in your face, because I want so I, I'm, I'm thinking that it's Darth Vader. He's he looks af after his ship, so it's it's in prime condition. So it's just some some little little um, wear and tear here and there. So, but I didn't, I didn't want to cover it in in rust and stuff like that. So I'm keeping these effects pretty pretty simple. There you see. Nice, nice color variation here and there. There you see the uh, faded out uh, pre shading. And the cool thing about oil paints is that uh, you can always erase them. Just grab a clean brush and uh, get some turpentine and you can re just remove it. Um, 
I didn't have any problems with uh, laying oil and turpentine over um, the Tamiya paints. Uh, didn't get any pub bubbling or tearing of the paints, underlying paint. Uh, one way to do it is to put a gloss or or clear coat over the the paint layer and then to do the oils but um, I trusted the Fitchton Fu guy and uh, did, did this all over the paint and it worked out great it's a uh, quite um, You get really, really nice re results with a uh, pretty low effort. It's it's really quick to do, and uh, uh, the drying times are also reasonable. Um, the paint layer is so thin that it's almost dry, like uh, in a couple of hours. But just to be safe, you should leave it overnight. I didn't, but. <laughs> It worked out well. Like I said, I try to have some kind of uh, plan, and or, or I'm planning some of those spots I'm placing there. I try to be like a consistent but random. Uh, it's hard, but um, but it like like when I'm watching this sp sped up it, it looks pretty random but I think I had some kind of uh, thought process behind that oh, there we go first pass of weathering okay blue black brown and white we get this kind of Bruh, what is it? Grace stuff. Okay, again, turpentine, new brush or clean brush, and this time much more thought after um, or designed places. Um, I'm putting, oh, yeah, we're doing the streaks now. Uh, I'm doing these at the front side of the wings so that they are those that places that get all the ju junk and uh, wearing of the maybe atmosphere that there is entering there you, see, you can see I'm erasing a couple of parts that got smeared This is a really fun technique. I I really enjoyed doing it. It's simple, fast, and and fun, and you, and you get uh, pretty nice results. Oh, look at my hand going. Did I say that this is real time? Yeah. Okay, this is the uh, inside of the wing part, the attachment to the body. You can barely see this part when, <laughs> when the ship is assembled, so... But, like, uh, was it Richard Taylor in the Lord of the Rings guy? The Veda, Veda workshop uh, boss, he said that, uh, uh, that the they have these minute details everywhere, but nobody can see them. But it's well worth the effort, right? Yeah, just a couple of brush strokes, and you get really cool looking streaks. I 
again I'm having this plan of uh, getting more of the streaks at the front end of the plane that's it, that's hitting the all the junk and uh, the back end of the ship is more cleaner maybe the turbulence is getting rid of the stuff like there the one of the streaks was t too pronounced so I just brushed it over a couple of times and it was it was gone almost like faded out you can never do this with acrylics or other paints this is the uh, top hatch Okay, now the fun part, the actual body or the back wing. Again, starting with the front edges and uh, picking up, up, up places that junk might uh, or the grime might um, collect and start smearing or leaking. can see that I'm, I'm again brushing or fading at the direction of travel and um, there was again er erasing stuff and um, I'm doing this like in passes um, bu building up the, the shapes and the uh, darkness or the amount of the streak erasing from these creepies so that they look like they're leaking from behind them so basically usually I I guess I do like a two or three like um, layers building up the shape and uh, tone of the tone of the streak this could be done in multiple different colors, I guess. Uh, like uh, doing uh, this kind of dark gray greases and uh, uh, maybe brown. Just to give it the uh, leaking rust effect. Looks like a uh, two passes makes make up a uh, good. There you can see again erasing stuff. Some of those streaks look a bit too um, too fat, and uh, maybe there's too many of them. So I'm kind of removing, and uh, this is real time after after I've done the both sides and here's the main body I'm doing this in a couple of sections so that it's more easy, easy to um, concentrate on the area so that I'm not just dabbing randomly everywhere so these are well thought out places if I would do, do this in one pass, the whole body, then I I guess I would just do it really randomly and it wouldn't be that uh, consistent. By the way, I'm not sure if I talked about this before, but uh, I've masked the insides of the cockpit with uh, um, cardboard and uh, blue tack uh, seal. Okay. 
again re erasing some of those two fat lines. So basically you need three brushes, one with turpentine, uh, one with uh, one with the color and one clean brush to fade out. And this is the cool part, the pin wash. I did a really really dark gray uh, mixture and uh, I've primed these parts with um, Vallejo premium gloss varnish. It's really good stuff. And uh, I'm this time I'm getting it right. Uh, like you rem may remember at the start of this series, uh, I tried this at the cockpit. It ended up doing gunk wash. That that is like a filling the whole object with with oil paint and uh, then just removing it. This pin wash is supposed to work like uh, uh, so that uh, you have a, a really thin uh, color mix and uh, it's it's supposed to run along the edges and uh, crevices and stick there. You'll, we'll later see when we are doing the body with the panel lines that it, it's kind of sucking into those panels and getting getting them to pop out. Uh, the key is to get the right consistency of the uh, of the paint. It needs to be um, fluid enough but still hold enough pigment to do the effect. And uh, one good trick that uh, Helgan 35 is using is um, doing the like uh, greases on your latex glove. You can see that I've tried there on my forefinger. There's like a black stains when I've 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 been testing the uh, if it's the like uh, the right consistency of the liquid. You can guide the color with turning the model let the gravity and uh, uh, I'm not sure what the effect of the liquid pulling itself in the cre crevices is but uh, or at least in English but there you can see it's just sucking into the grooves or the panel lines there I'm just dabbing here and there like and like guiding the guiding the paint and you don't have to worry about those uh, like uh, guiding spots there. We'll get we'll get rid of those later. But I I've always wondered how how this is done. So really happy to learn it. Uh, I kind of thought that the people doing the World War or the aeroplanes with with the panel lines that they they were like tracing them with with maybe brush or something. Of course, that's not. Well, I guess somebody can do it, but no way I can do it. There you can see the liquid running really really nicely in the in the corner. Uh, I'm also like um, putting more emphasis on some some of the parts and are like uh, really uh, pushing the pushing the paint in like like, like in here uh, I thought that this should be like a really dark corner so I'm putting much more paint in there oh it's magical I'm really happy that I got the uh, paint running smoothly on those panel lines because I was really worried after the failed cockpit tries that uh, I didn't know how to do it but luckily 
I got it right. We I learned something. And here I'm smearing it all over so but that's okay because we can we can rub it off. That's the beauty of oil pens. And here I've already started a bit with the cockpit and uh, this is real time this is the actual um, speed that I'm working looks kind of lame after the <laughs> uh, sped up video come on focus other than my knuckles So basically, you're just guiding the liquid to go into the direction that you want. Usually it's going there, but occasionally it needs some help. Okay, and after we done the messing, then comes the cleaning. So I gave it a, like a hour or two to dry, so that the uh, most of the like uh, sheen of the paint dries out, so that it it won't suck into those. Uh, uh, cotton buds or q-tips and uh, here we're doing removing of those blotches uh, remember to wipe um, like uh, across the panel line uh, not along it so that you won't wipe off the uh, paint in the panel That's, I think it's pretty cool that 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 it it stays only in the panel lines. It's it's really really cool effect. Getting some Q-tips stuff stuck in there. Had to clean it. And. Uh, it's helpful to replace the worn tip time to time because uh, it starts to get on the grooves and uh, taking too much too much stuff out. starting to shape up it's starting to look pretty pretty nice with all these weathering effects we've done especially this back wing I'm really happy how it turned out but uh, I still think that um, uh, it's it's a bit um, too much uh, weathering uh, I will take it down a bit. Uh, I guess it's in the next video, but uh, I'm like a spraying uh, a mist layer of lighter, lighter gray over it, so that it's taken faded out a bit, because uh, it was a bit, just a bit too dark, and uh, uh, made it look like a scale model uh, somehow. I guess it it was something to do with the darkness of the 
of the weathering and uh, those panel lines, panel lines, so they were maybe a bit too oh, over exaggerated. So I wanted to take them down a bit. Uh, so, but we'll get into that in the, I guess it's the next episode. sure if you can see but um, I guess it's because of the camera or, or the reflection of the model but sometimes the it, it almost looks like it has a like a purplish or bluish tint over it but it's really really medium gray I guess it's just the white balance is doing tricks on the tricks, tricks on the color and there it is weathering pretty much done yeah, just checking that everything is fine taking out some of the spots that I've missed okay that's it see you at the next episode bye